and Mr. Blumenauer for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. As one-fifth of the world's population relies on fresh water that is either polluted or significantly overdrawn, the lack of safe water and sanitation is an ongoing threat to global security and remains the world's greatest health problem, accounting for two million deaths a year and half the illness in the developing world. Before I finish speaking, 15 more children will die needlessly from waterborne disease. To address this slow motion disaster, I worked with the then chair and ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Henry Hyde and Tom Lantos, and the Senate Majority and Minority Leaders, Bill Frist and Harry Reid, to enact the Paul Simon Water for the Poor Act of 2005. This landmark bipartisan legislation established investment in safe and affordable water for the world's poorest as a major goal of United States foreign assistance, but sadly, with the last administration, we were slow to implement and until last year, slow to fund it. We are more than halfway to the 20, 2015 Millennium Development Goal with mixed results, and we must redouble our effort. A special concern is Sub-Saharan Africa that, last, that lags so far behind that we'll miss our modest goal to cut the people without safe drinking water and sanitation by one half by 2015, that Sub-Saharan Africa will miss that target date by 25 years for water and sanitation by 61 years. And these are not just numbers. These are millions of people's lives. Some progress is being made through innovative partnerships between the United States, NGOs, businesses, and local partners, but the stark truth remains. Nearly 900 million people worldwide still at, lack access to safe drinking water, and two out of five people on the planet lack basic sanitation services. And this is going to become more of a challenge in the future because of climate change and rapid population growth, there will be further stress on water resources. By 2025, 2.8 billion people in more than 48 countries will face devastating water shortages. To help accelerate the progress, on Earth Day, I introduced bipartisan legislation, the Paul Simon Water for the World Act of 2009, along with Representatives Payne, Rohrbacher, Jesse Jackson Jr., Zach Womp, Welch, Bozeman, Burton, George Miller, and Fortenberry. The purpose of this act is to empower the U.S. government to respond to the pressing poverty, security, and environmental threats presented by the dire mismanagement and shortage of global flesh, fresh water. The goal for the Water for the World Act is for the United States to provide 100 million people of the world's poorest first-time access to safe drinking water and sanitation on a sustainable basis by 2015. To accomplish this goal, the legislation builds on the Water for the Poor framework for investment, expands U.S. foreign assistance capacity, and recognizes sustainable water and sanitation policy as vital to the long-term diplomatic and development efforts of the United States. I applaud the leadership of Senators Durbin, Corker, and Murray, who have introduced companion bipartisan legislation in the Senate. This legislation will help the United States focus its efforts and fully implement a smart and efficient global water strategy that meets our commitment to water and sanitation to over a billion people in need. I urge every member of Congress to make water policy and funding a priority, to save, to save the life of a child every 15 seconds who dies needlessly from waterborne disease. I yield back. The gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Boehner, is recognized.